by his brother. Now, you just got to be honest. Lord knows y'all's heart. <laughs> y'all know how we are. We'll pray real hard for something, and then when we get it, we don't want it anymore. But, you know, that's just the way we are. It's good to see you all out this morning again. I'd like to thank you for last Sunday night. Thank you for the meal and the gifts, and uh, just thank you for the love. It's an honor to be able to serve you here. Uh, and I hope the Lord leaves us here for many more years. We just have to wait and see what his plan is. We're always going to follow his plan. Whether we like it or not, we have to follow his plan. Amen. So thank you all for that. Thank you. Glad to see Tom this morning here. Yeah. Already kicking high. <laughs> he was showing us how high he could kick his leg back there this morning. <laughs> so we're glad Tom, Tom's on that road to recovery. And we're so thankful for that. Uh, <laughs> I believe it will. Huh? I have to know if it works. I believe that. I believe that. But thank you again for being here this morning. Now let's just let the Lord have his way. Can we do that today? Amen. That again, that's another hard one for us. Because if we let him have his way, that means we're not in control. So this morning, let's let him have his way in our life. Can we do that together? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for just being a great loving God. Lord, we thank you for the grace, the mercy, Lord, that you bestow on us every day. Lord, you are a loving God, and we're so thankful for that. Lord, this morning as we come, Lord, we just want to lift the name of Jesus in this place high and lift it up. Father, we want to worship with everything we have. Lord, thank you so much for the rain that you sent that we so desperately needed. We're so glad that you saw fit to allow us to have it. Father, thank you for that. Lord, this morning, Lord, we lift up all of those families that's been mentioned on the prayer list. Lord, I pray you be with the Allen family, Father. Lord, just reach down and touch those kids like, Father, as only you can comfort and give them peace, Father. Lord, this morning, we just ask for an anointing from above. As the choir sings, Lord, as the words preach, Father, we just pray that the Holy Ghost be in charge here today. We love you and we thank you, Lord. Thanks we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
one, three, and four. Give me one, three, and four. Glad it's well with your soul this morning. Amen. Let me tell you something. If it's not well with your soul this morning, it's not God's fault. It's yours. Amen. And if it's not well with your soul this morning, 
you need to be praying. God, I need some things to change. And then listen to me. I'm going to speak to you as plainly as I know how right now. If you don't know that you're saved this morning, you need to ask God today, Lord, save me. Amen. Amen. And if the Holy Amen. Spirit draws you in and speaks to your heart this morning, you heed that call. Sure. And you say, Lord, save me. Because you know what? You don't know when your last day is. Right. 49-year-old man left this world yesterday not knowing it was his last day. Was it well with his soul? I can only pray it was. I can't answer that question for him nor his family. But you know what? That's one he has to deal with. Should have already been dealt with. Hope it was already dealt with. But you know, we've got to speak for ourselves this morning. And you know what I've realized that when it's well with our soul, like we sang just a few minutes ago, everything else seems to just be better. You ever notice that? Everything just seems to be better around us. So how is it well with our soul? What do we know when it's well with our soul? And no, I didn't have any of that written down. We're not going to use that. It's just come to me, okay? When it's well with our soul, we understand things a little bit different. If you got your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. I want to share a few verses out of the first part of this chapter this morning. I'm telling you, the book of Romans, <clears throat> we know it's a, it's a book that most of our doctrine is taken from. Out of the book of Romans. Because it deals with sin. It deals with the justification. It deals with the therefores, okay? It's got a lot of therefores in it. The therefores in there is, listen to me, the therefores are therefore things that you need to know. All right? It's things that you need to etch into your brain. It's things that God's going to teach you to help you be better, okay? Listen to this. Just, just a couple of therefores out, out of the book of Romans. Therefore, there is condemnation. Romans chapter 3, verse 20 teaches us that. Listen. Therefore, there is justification. Romans 5, 1, we're going to deal with that here in just a minute. Therefore, there is no condemnation. Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is dedication. Romans 12, 1. You see all those therefores that are in there? That's the therefores that we've got to know if we're going to, listen to this, survive in this Christian world that we put ourselves in. Listen to me. You choose to be and choose to live in the Christian world. And you say, well, the world around the Christian world is very cruel and ugly today. Yes, it is. That's why you need to know the therefores. Yes, sir. Right. Because if you don't know those, you're in trouble. Right. Romans 5.1. Look at this. I want to read this passage of Scripture, and I want to share a couple things with you this morning that can help you, that can help you be a little bit better if you'll let it. <clears throat> Listen. Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patient experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see that? Do you see the power that is in that passage right there? Listen, more than that, do you see the therefore that's right there? That thing you need to know today? First and foremost, I want you to understand something this morning. It starts out in this, and this is, this is just some verse-by-verse verse preaching this morning. This is some taking a verse and pulling what's in that verse out and taking it and applying it to our lives. Look at this. Peace with God. We love peace with God, don't we? We love what the Bible teaches on that. 
and we can read those things about the peace of God, that peace beyond all understanding over in Philippians, the peace that God gives us. We like peace, don't we? We just love peace. But what's the opposite of peace? War. Did you know that? Peace with God. And I want you to understand something this morning. And this is, this is the teaching, and this is the things that the world don't like, okay? Unsaved people have no peace with God. We want to make it that way. We want to make it seem that way. We want to teach it that way so that we can give, the, listen to this, a false hope. Right. An unsaved person has no peace with God. Why? Because they are at war with God. Why are they at war with God? Because they are an enemy of God. Right. And you say, well, preacher, you mean they're the enemies of God? But the Bible says, preacher, that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that nobody should perish. But I would have eternal life. He sure did. Absolutely. And we're taught that right here in the latter part of this little passage right here. But let me tell you something. It's one thing to say that. It's one thing to read that. It's one thing to even know that. It's another thing to accept that. Right. That's a whole other thing right there is to accept that. And if you want peace with God, you have to accept that his son shed his blood for you. Right. And if you're unwilling to accept that doctrine, if you're unwilling to accept what's being taught right there, you'll never come to know Christ as Savior. Right. And you'll never have peace with God. Isaiah teaches us, 48, 22 says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, with the wicked. There again, we don't want to look at unsaved people. It's not in our thought process to look at unsaved people and say they're wicked. They are. Right. I'm sorry. You're not going to like this this morning. But unsaved people are wicked. Why? Because they're an enemy of God. They have no peace with God. And they're doing, listen, their thing. And you're children of darkness. And if you're a child of the darkness, that means you're a child of Satan. And you may say, well, preacher, I don't, I don't see it that way. I, In my mind, I don't want to see it that way either. But in what the truth that God's word teaches, you have to see it that way. Because that's what it says. And what, I, I, what I'm looking at is by the blood this morning, every person can have peace with God. All you got to do is accept it. Amen. There again, you got to know these things. Listen, Isaiah 48, 22 says it. That the wicked have no peace. But listen to this. Isaiah 32, 17 says, The work of righteousness shall be peace. The work of righteousness shall be peace. Listen, there's a word that's used right here that you've got to understand. Justified. Wait a minute. That word's used right before peace with God. Therefore being justified. If we're justified, that means we've stood before God in our sin. We've claimed our sin to him. We've given our sin to him. And you know what he's done to us? He's thrown that sin in the past, and he has justified us to stand in his peace. Right. He, that's a legal term. Justified. But you know what? We were dead to the law. But through the grace of God, we know peace with God that comes through justification. To know the peace of God is to be right with God, is to be justified. That doesn't make you the perfect person. That doesn't make you holier than thou. That does not, listen to this, that doesn't even make you better than the unsaved person. What that means is you're justified in the eyes of God, your righteousness is in the eyes of God, and you're saved through his blood. That makes you one of his and gives you peace. Amen. And gives you peace. You see that? <clears throat> Romans is a hard book. I'm telling you, Romans is a book that will flat out wear you out. Amen. And if you're going to teach the book of Romans, I don't care if it's in Sunday school, wherever it is, if you're just going to do a personal Bible study in it, you better be ready to study and get kicked. Amen. Yep. Peace with God. And you say, well, preacher, I see what you're saying, and I see what the Word teaches right there. But how can you look at an unsaved person and call them wicked? The Bible says we're supposed to love them. I do. I sure do. And I'm not going to run up and call them wicked. 
The Word of God's going to call them wicked because what's going to happen is the Holy Spirit of a holy God is going to begin to speak to their heart. And you know what? You know what the Lord done when he saved me? He spoke to my heart and he called me wicked. He said, you're wicked. You're evil. You're a child of Satan. I'm giving you a way out right now. You're bound up in your sin, and I'm giving you a way out right now. If you'll come right now, speak right now, come to where I am, confess me, I'll save you, and you won't be wicked anymore. God. And you won't be wicked anymore. I'll, oh, I'll justify you. I will justify you. Why? Because you cannot justify yourself. Because that's trying to live in the law. Have you ever compared yourself to the law? When you compare yourself to the law, as the word teaches, you're headed for hell, okay? Point blank. I don't know how else to put it. You say, well, that's harsh. I know. But thank God I'm justified. Condemnation. Listen to this. Condemnation means that God declares us sinners. Justification, God declares us righteous, which is a declaration of peace. Which is a declaration of peace. It does not mean we won't have wars in our lives. It simply means we've got peace with God through those wars in our lives. You're going to face wars, I'm telling you. You are going to face wars. Do you know how hard it was for me not to be mad at the rain yesterday? Because <laughs> I had a plan. And you know what? All that rain changed my plan. And no kidding, my truck was not stuck in the yard. <laughs> but I sat there I was soaked to the bone and it was I wanted to be mad at God I wanted to say God why? I know we prayed for rain God but today why not tomorrow why not yesterday why today and he began to tell me, he said, because that's when I wanted to see you. <laughs> the day he saved you, the day he justified you, is the day that he wanted to save you. Yes, sir. And when we look and we say, I missed that day. Or that day came and I heard him calling. I heard him saying, come to me and I'll save you. Come to me and I'll justify you. And I turned him down. I pray that he calls you again. You know why? Because the Bible teaches he don't have to call you again. Right. But it's through his grace that he will. Amen. We hope. As children of God, peace rules but the unsaved are at war. That breaks my heart to know that unsaved people, good people, are at war with God. But it says that. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. No other way. Not only do we have peace, I like this, this next part. Not only do we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of y'all love Jesus? Amen. I hope every hand in the house goes up. If there's a hand don't go up and I see you, I'm coming to pray with you. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to call you out. I'm coming to where you are. We've been to pray. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see what that does right there? When we use that term, our Lord, that puts it in a plural sense. That's talking to the church, and that's talking about the church. That's talking to the body of believers that has accepted Christ right there. Our Lord Jesus. But it also, too, can be brought down to a personal level to ride on to a one-on-one -on -one to our Lord Jesus. And if you're ever going to know peace, you're going to have to know our Lord Jesus. And 
He's going to have to be the ruler of your life. The Bible says, Isaiah teaches over the ninth chapter that he is the prince. The prince of peace. Isn't that good? I'm glad that prince of peace is my savior. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he's my savior. But this next part, I want you to look at this. You have an entrance. How hard is it? Now, I, this drives me crazy. Now, I'm back on Walmart. <laughs> I'm back on Walmart, okay. How do you spell enter? E-N-T-E-R, right? And how do you spell exit? So why do people continue to come in the exit door when they're supposed to come in the entrance? I've been wondering that myself. Think about that for just a minute. It is a blatant violation of what it says. just for no reason? Would you put it there just to have it there? Enter here. Exit here. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Until you get to Walmart. <laughs> because there's no regard for the enter or the exit. Let me tell you something. When we're justified, we have peace with God. But I'm going to tell you something. We also have an entrance. And it ain't spelled exit. And you only get there by one way. You have access. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. I get excited on this one. <clears throat> by whom also we have access by faith into his grace. Amen. We have entrance. By faith into his grace. Nowhere in that passage does it say exit. Nowhere in that passage, in that little part of that verse of scripture, does it say exit. It says entrance. It says access. It says, look at here. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to come in right here. This place. So what does that mean? What does that mean in our life? Listen, did y'all know that the Jew was kept away from the presence of God or, or the place of God by a veil? Did y'all know that? By a veil. And did you also know that even further back from that veil that the Gentile, me and you, were kept away from the presence of God or away from the place of God by a wall? Did you know that? By a wall. So in other words, we had no access. There was no entrance. Do you know what it said on the wall where the Gentile had to stay? That, that place where the Gentile had to stay at? Do you know what it said on that wall? If you go beyond this point, you will be killed. There was no entrance. You couldn't go in. You couldn't get to where God was. But... Oh, I like them butts, don't y'all? Don't y'all like those butts? But, by the blood of Jesus Christ, Luke chapter 24, 22, verse 45, says that the veil was rent from the top to the bottom so that the Jew could have access to the Lord Jesus Christ. They could have access by the entrance where the veil rent to God. He said, boy, I'm glad the Jews got in. But do you know what Ephesians chapter, four, chapter 2 verse 14 teaches us? It says that not only did the Jews get in because the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, the wall of partition was torn down. Yes, sir. That means the Gentile got in because the blood of Christ tore down that wall and now we have access and entrance to a holy God. Amen. You see that? Does that not excite y'all? As much as it does me. It has entrance. We have a place because Jesus Christ died for us. And what does that mean for us? Listen to this. 
Not only do we have access to him, the Jew and the Gentile have entrance to the king. But listen, that gives us, oh, church, listen. That gives us the ability to draw from an inexhaustible source of power in our life. And inexhaustible. You know what that word means? Y'all say, oh, pretty good stuff. You got a big word. And it's a big word he didn't make up. <laughs> inexhaustible. Never runs out. Never grows tired. Never gives up. Never runs out of gas. Never falls to the wayside. It is inexhaustible. And you know what that means for you? You can't use it up. It don't matter how many times you go to it. It don't matter how many times you draw from it. It doesn't matter how much you draw from it. You will never use up the grace of God. That's the power that we stand in. That's the access that we have through the blood of Christ. Now, now I'm going to tell you something, church. You hear me. That peace and that access is what we need in our lives today. I don't know about you. It's what I need in my life today. See, I've got a bad habit about answering for other people. And I can't answer for you. I can only answer for myself. We have an inexhaustible source. I like that. Y'all know I can be notorious. It's not happening in a long time for running out of gas. I was good at it when my gas hand in my truck didn't work. And I forget that. I put gas in the other day. I don't know if I did or not. By that time, it quit. No, I didn't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. By the time it was spit first. No, I didn't. I didn't put no gas in the other day. Somebody come get me. Somebody bring me some gas. And as a child of the king, listen, we get tired. We become exhausted. We give up every effort there is up here in ourselves. And we get so downtrodden, our peace begins to leave us. Our joy is not existing in us anymore. When I say not existing, it's not seen by others. It's still there. Joy never leaves. It just gets covered up because we stop drawing from the power. Stop drawing from the source. We stop drawing from the things of God that is given us through our salvation through Christ Jesus and was made accessible by the entrance to him through his blood. I like that. Don't y'all? Yes. Ephesians 1, 7 teaches us this. Listen, we can draw from his inexhaustible riches in his grace because we're redeemed and because we're forgiven. Yes, sir. Right. Wait a minute. That goes back to the saved, unsaved. You see, what may appear <coughs> that the unsaved person may be drawing from those things not going to happen. We have access to him. We can draw from him. We can live through him. And there's only one. Hear me when I say this. There's only one entrance. That's the blood of Christ. That's the only entrance. But then there's another thing I want you to see this morning. See, this is great. Listen to this. Peace with God takes care of the past, right? Yep. Peace with God. We're, we're at peace with our past. We've given it over to him. He's thrown it into that sea of forgetfulness like he said he would do. And we don't have to tote that thing anymore. We've got peace with God. Access to God. Listen to this. You know what access to God does? Access to God takes care of the present. When we got access to God, our present situation, we take to him. Our present situations go to him. Our present situations, we present to him and he works in them. Why? Because we're drawing from those riches. The hope of glory, oh, church takes care of the future. 
You see what's happening? We got a past, present, future right here. The hope of glory takes care of the future. You know, there's a word right here. Look here, look here with me in the latter part of verse 2. It says, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We stand and rejoice in that hope. That means we're excited about it. But did you know you can replace, there's a word that will interchange with that word rejoice that really should be where we're at in the hope of his glory? That word rejoice can be changed with the word boast. You know what boast means? Boast means to brag on. And you know what that says right there? Look here, let's read it that way. Watch this. <clears throat> Wherein we stand and boast in the hope of the glory of God. Listen, as a child of the king, I can stand here and I can brag about what my Jesus did. I can brag about his blood. I can brag about what he's done in my life. And I can brag about where I'm headed when I leave this world. Amen. That's the one thing that we're given that we can brag about. Amen. Amen. Everybody loves bragging rights, don't they? Y'all love it when you win something and get bragging rights, don't you? Well, I like your bragging rights. Can I tell you something? When it comes to my salvation, boy, you know what Jesus gave to me? He gave me bragging rights. I've got it. It's mine. You can have it in you. You can have your own, but you can't have mine. It belongs to me. And I'm going to rejoice in that fact that my future is taken care of. My future is sealed. My past, and boy, we've all got one. Anybody says I ain't got a past, you're telling a story. Amen. Amen. I got one. And it's a good one. And I got a present. That's where I am right now. And you know what? Even when times get, even when the wars rage, and they do, everybody gets it in their mind that preaching his family is that you're exempt from the wars. <laughs> you all spend some time at my house sometimes. <laughs> But you can be, because you know what? We live in everyday real life just like everybody else does. And those things of everyday real life crash around us just like everything else does. But I have access. And my future is sealed through the blood of Christ. You see that? I'm going to brag on that. Because you know why? Let me tell you why I want to brag on that. It has to save me. He didn't have to save me. He didn't have to save you. I hope you're saved. But he didn't have to save you. That's right. He did because he loved you. Amen. He didn't have to do any of that. He didn't have to bring any of that about. He could have let us go to hell and he'd have been justified in doing so. That's right. Because we were sinners. Amen. And we separated ourselves from him. But when we brag about him, when we get excited about Jesus. Listen to me. I want you to hear something. There's nothing to brag about in your sin. Did you know that? There is nothing to boast about in your sin. You say, well, preacher, I, you know, I've got some things to brag about. You need to flip right over and read Romans 3.27 because here's what it says. Look at this. Wherefore is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. There ain't nothing you can brag about in your sin, but there's everything you can brag about in the blood of Christ. Why? How? How does all this come about? Where does all this, where's the therefore? All that's the therefore. These are things we need to know. When you know something, you use something. I love people that know stuff. I worked for a man one time. This is funny. I worked for a man one time. And I was in his office and he was just chewing me out about something. About something somebody else done. But he said, you know what? Everybody ought to be born knowing something. <laughs> and I looked at him and he said, you, you see what I'm saying? Not really. <laughs> he said, everybody that's born ought to know something. Stood there, man, and I scratched my head. I said, what? <laughs> Something. 
So at that point, I said, you just can't think of nothing else to say right now, can you? He said, not really. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm gone. Everybody ought to be born knowing something. Did you know we are and don't realize it? We're all born into sin. That's right. That's right. Not realizing. Even a baby, even a baby is born into sin. You say, preacher, how can you take a precious baby and say that that baby is born in sin? Conceived in sin, brought in sin, baby was born in sin. That baby has to have a redeemer to be saved. Right. Now, if that baby passes and leaves this world before that age of accountability, is it in, ushered into the arms of God? Yes, it is. Right. There's not a doubt in my mind. Right. Not a doubt in my mind. Yeah. But once the Lord starts speaking to the heart, that's when you have to accept and say, I will. But there's nothing to brag about in our sin, but there's everything to brag about in Jesus. Latter part of this chapter. Verse 3 and 4 are going to build your character. They're going to build your patience, build your endurance, build your character. I want you to think about this. And I want you to put yourself back. I want you to think about this. Unsafe person, I want you to listen to this. If you're here this morning. Saved person, I want you to remember this because this is you. Listen to these words. <coughs> Verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for us. At my weakest point of my sin, Christ died for me. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But look at verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can I tell you something? This brings back a thought to me. It brings back a word that was mentioned that one night when uh, Alan and the group here were singing, Brother Brandon made a statement. We know we're sinners saved by grace. We get that. But if in our minds, if we just continue to carry on as sinners saved by grace, we never get past this point right here. Right. Because we left being that sinner, and we're still sinners, don't get me wrong, but we became a saint. We became a saint of God after we were saved. So let's refer to ourselves as saints of God, not, per, not saints of perfection, not saints that's going to get somebody into heaven, but saints that has been accepted by Christ because he saved us and he brought us out of our sin. Listen to that. He brought us out of our past. When we continue to refer to ourselves as just those old sinners, we're bringing ourselves right back to this place right here. He died for us while we were yet sinners. Now I am a saint of God, forgiven, redeemed. My hope is sealed. My past is forgiven. I have access to God. Why? Because I'm a saint of God. Right. Amen. You see, that's our mindset right there. That's where we have to come to. All our imperfections are forgiven us. Why? Because we're a saint of God. Right. Right. Unsafe person, if you're here today, you want to be a saint of God and the Holy Spirit speaking to you. All you've got to say is yes. That's right. Yes, I will. And confess it to him. That's, all you, that's it. That's all you got to do. It's the simplest thing in the world. So why make it complicated? Why say, well, to be saved, you've got to do this, 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 nine point rule. Once you get past the nine point rule, then we'll get over here. Then we'll start talking about this part. All you've got to do to be saved is accept Christ when he speaks to you. That's right. That's right. right. Amen. There ain't nothing hard about it. Nope. We complicate it. Right. Therefore. And so you take that eighth verse and then you go right back to the first line. Therefore be justified by By my faith in God, by my faith in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I am justified. Amen. There's a difference between justification and sanctification. Justification is I'm forgiven, and 
And God has pleaded my case. Jesus has carried my case and forgiven me. Sanctified means I have a purpose. Sanctification comes after. We all have a purpose. We're born with a purpose, but it's not activated. It's not brought to life. Until we stand before God as a thing to And you know what? Listen to me. Everybody's going to stand before him. There's coming a day. Amen. And that realm on the other side, that we're all going to stand before him. We're going to stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to stand before him as king. Many are going to stand before that white, great white throne of judgment that Revelation teaches about over there. And when you stand before that great white throne, oh, woe is you. Because that's the throne where the sinners are going to be standing. The unsaved people are going to be brought to to be cast into hell for eternity. So if you have, listen to me, if you ever hear songs and they're singing about a great white throne, you need to stop it. You need to say, stop! That's wrong. You need to rewrite that word. Because sometimes we'll do it out of thought and not do it out of scripture. That's right. We're all going to stand there. Listen to this. We're all going to be held accountable. For the saint, you're going to be held accountable for your life after salvation. The sins of your past, they're forgiven. The sins you, you, you cry out to, they're forgiven. But the things that God's leading you to do now, Carrying it out through you. That's what you're going to stand there. I asked you to do this. I wanted you to do this. I didn't need you to do anything. But I wanted you to do these things. See? Justified. This morning, somebody may need to be. Somebody may need to enter. Somebody may need some peace. Some peace for the past. The only way you can enter is by the blood of Christ. There ain't no other way. I wish it was. Be easier. See, that's what's happening now. Listen to me. This passage of Scripture, when you come through this passage of Scripture, it changes you. Was the life of all the, the 12 in here, was it an easy life for them? The ones that were called by God, was it easy for them? No, all of them but one faced martyrdom. Was Paul's life eating it? Think about it, Paul had a life of ease. Man, he was a smart, he was educated, could have done anything he wanted to do, had wealth, had fame, had it all. But when he gave it up to the blood of Christ, he suffered the rest of his ministry. Right. Yep. He suffered. Now he had prosperous days just like we do. We, we, we think because we read what Paul's written that every day in Paul's life was that downtrodden day. That's not true. Every day as a life of a Christian is not a downtrodden day. Why? Because if you choose to boast and rejoice in your king, well, he'll make it a good day for you. Regardless of what's raging around you. You know what we told him when he, when he was asleep in the boat? They started across the, 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 the sea over there. He got a little rough and their face got a little weak. They said, somebody wake him up. Somebody wake him up now. We're going to die if you don't wake him up. And when they woke him up and he stood at the side of the ship and he said, peace, be still. And what did they say? What, kind, what manner of man is this? What kind of man is this that the waves and the winds and the storms obey his voice? What kind of man is this? This is that same kind of man that would give his life for somebody out in their sin so that the storms could be calmed. Praise God. So if you've got a storm today, something's raging in your life today, or listen to this, it's one thing
to brag about our Lord and Savior to a world. It's another thing when you come to Him and you brag to Him about who He is in your life. Amen. Praise God. Think about that one for just a minute. When's the last time you did that? I need to brag. I need to boast to Him for who He is and what He's done in my life. Paul said, I am what I am because of the grace of God. Amen. I am what I am. You are what you are because of the grace of God. This morning, as the Holy Spirit is just working this morning, the Holy Spirit's moving in the box this morning. I can see it. We sang that first song, that same Spirit is moving this morning. But you've got to be willing. Church, are you willing today to say, you know what? I've got access, but I don't use it. I'm trying to enter by the exit. I need to get to where Jesus is. Just for a few minutes this morning. You may be here this morning, you realize, I'm lost. I need to be saved. I need to make my salvation known this morning. I need to come to Christ. You got to be taken care of. Maybe here this morning you just realize I've just been in a guilty distance for a long time. I need some, I, I need a lot of Jesus in my life. Amen. All you got to do is come to him. So as you stand this morning, they call the song 290 in a church hymnal. 290. Church, church hymnal. hymnal. You stand this morning, and as the Holy Spirit begins to deal, the Holy Spirit begins to work, it begins to make you realize and make you think where you are with Him today. Let's boast in Him today. As they sing this morning, hey, don't hesitate. Come where He is. Come in a hurry. The quicker you can get there, the better you'll be. Looking for some peace this morning? Come where he is today. Come where he is this morning.